Good evening and a very warm welcome to First Issues. Let us paint a picture. It is month end and as it has become tradition, this is a time to go shopping for groceries which for many people includes the food basics. You go to your favorite store where each aisle is awash with all that you need. Different rice varieties in the starch sections. Down that aisle is Bupijama Bele, Paleche and different pastas. You throw these in your trolley and move on to the oils. Then the drinks, confectionery, onto the meat section, followed by a stroll to the dairy side. Then fruit and vegetables before checkout at the till. This trip to the grocery store is usually nothing more than an autopilot exercise in that. Not much thought is put into the nutritional content and quality of what is going into that trolley and how it would affect not only your health but your aptitude at your place of employment. What is the correlation between food and work, you ask? Well, an article by a writer Ed Becker states that employees who have poor nutrition also tend to lack motivation and have lower production rates. Not only that, it is no secret that poor eating habits lead to long-term illnesses, which end up proving a direct linkage to an increase in sick days and absenteeism from work. Ultimately, all these directly or indirectly affect employment companies and their bottom lines. All that because of a trip to the grocery store. What's the remedy? Well, I think it's important to remember when you're going shopping, this is, if you like, the doctor's kitchen. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is, is what is healthy and what is unhealthy and the things that actually guide you into buying junk food and the things that actually remain on the shelf that are healthy. And we'll start with the flowers and, and, and the uh, grain section. And here we are in this fabulous cash and carry uh, and we are grateful to the owners to supply us some time. And if we scan across the aisles, you look at the difference between the aisle on the right to me and the aisle on the left. And uh, the most healthiest, and we're talking about indigenous natural uh, uh, grain-based foods here, are the things that actually grow in our soil, the things like millet, the things like sorghum. But you've got to be careful that what we eat is not refined sorghum or refined millet. You know, we, we talk about sorghum and we talk about sorghum meal. It's important to understand that sorghum itself, if it's refined, is the same as eating mealy meal. So if you scan across the section here, you'll see, for example, sorghum meal. Sorghum meal is actually straight from the soil. It's unrefined, it's brown. The browner it is, the healthier it is. It's got more fiber, it's got more nutrition in it. The kernel, for example, of, of rice is, is healthy for you people. Dehusk it and you have white rice. We always say, you know, the whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead. So the whiter the meal, whether you talk about, you know, mealy meal or you're talking about uh, maguinia flour mix or whether you're talking about all the flowers uh, on these aisles are really very toxic for you because all they do is contain sugar. The more you remove the fiber or the moruko, the less the fiber content, the more the sugar content. So when you're actually mixing, you know, white flour or maguinha flour mix or a cake flour, all you're doing is simply adding sugar to sugar. And then if you're doing cake flour, you're adding sugar to make the cake. So by the end of the day, all you're doing is consuming cake. Um, and the same with the sorghum. If you're eating semp, if you're eating palechi, if you're eating white rice and white bread, as we've talked about so many times, these are simply ways of actually consuming sugar. So when we tell patients not to eat sugar, it's not just the sugar they put in their tea, it's the sugar that they're adding from refined flour. So this is the essence of how to shop. Make sure you're going to the aisles which have got unrefined, brown, uh, husked, if you like, uh, wheats and cereals. While most of us shop unaware of the health dangers associated with most foods, many of us seem to agree on one thing. Oils and fats are bad. This is not entirely true, according to Dr. Bhagat. I think it's important to understand that uh, oil or uh, fats have got a bad name. Um, largely because people think that uh, saturated fat things like butter or coconut oil uh, olive oil are bad for you. It's actually quite the opposite. Um, but when it comes to oil, it's important that you eat natural oil. Again, we want to emphasize, eat what nature made as oil naturally rather than what man makes in a factory. And if you look at the shelves over here, they're full of golden, you know, appealing bottles of, of um, sunflower oil, canola oil, soya oil. And these honestly are very toxic. The reason why they're toxic is they're manufactured. You actually take the bean and you take it to a factory, you squeeze the oil out and it comes out as this gooey gooish grayish color and then they add all the chemistry to make it look golden like this 
And of course, unfortunately, some have actually have these little signs saying endorsed by the Heart Foundation. This is simply untrue. If we look at the oils uh, in a laboratory or in a human, the moment you consume sunflower oil or canola oil or soya bean oil, it actually inflames the system. It's high in what are called omega-6 fatty acids, which actually cause buildup of cholesterol in the circulation. And they're high in oxidants, which actually cause aging. Uh, if you want to stick to the natural oils, the natural oils are things like we've talked about, butter, you know, uh, olive oil, a little bit of that, coconut oil, uh, ghee, which is clarified butter where the, where the, where the milk is actually evaporated and you've, you're left with this fat, which is extremely healthy for you. It's soothing on the gut. Sesame oil, avocado oil. Now, these don't have to be used in large concentrations, but small amounts uh, of those oils are extremely healthy for you. Avocado oil is probably nature's best oil. It's full of antioxidants. It's full of minerals. It's full of nutrients. It's actually very good to cook. It has a high heating point, so it doesn't actually burn, and they're the best oils to cook with. So when you're doing your shopping, be mindful about the sort of oils you look at it. When you look at the container of the bottle, if the container of the bottle has chemicals that you can't understand, it is chemistry in action rather than nature. So make sure you're eating natural oils. In Africa, help is what we do. That is why we at FNB are relentlessly driven to provide real help to you, the passionate and courageous, the creators and the optimists. These are the entrepreneurs we support, the communities we uplift. It is because of you that real help is what we do. FNB, how can we help you? Welcome back to First Day Shoes on our stroll in the doctor's kitchen with Dr. Kieran Bagat. There is nothing like a nice washdown with a cool drink after a good meal. But if the right choice of drink is not made, there may be unfortunate consequences on our bodies later. Dr. Bagat warns, especially of the sugar content that we do not see in most of our favorite cordials, fizzy drinks and especially fruit juices. This is my favorite section of the aisle where we have fizzy drinks and we have cordials and we have fruit juices. Remember, they are equal in terms of their toxicity. They both contain huge quantities of sugar which uh, inflame the body and cause all the diseases we've talked about in our previous programs. So don't be convinced by containers that say 100% fruit juice. It literally is 100% sugar. Don't be deceived into thinking that a cordial is less toxic than uh, some fizzy drinks. They are all uh, toxic to the body, they raise the sugar, and in diabetics or pre-diabetics, they really should be not part of your shopping basket. The sugars in both of these raise the body's inflammatory response. The body becomes inflamed, it's like it's on fire. The body leashes out a chemical called insulin to mop up the sugar. Eventually, the insulin runs out and you become diabetic. When you become diabetic, your weight goes up, your cholesterol goes up, your blood pressure goes up, your arteries get blocked, you get Alzheimer's and dementia. And these are the long-term effects. And this is the upstream result of the long-term effects that we see. Uh, in our patients on a day-to-day -day basis. Since we have been disillusioned of the supposed health benefits of these fruit juices, Dr. Bagat says the better alternative to these is sparkling water. The better alternative, if you really have to have something fizzy, is to take sparkling water and add some lime or add a lemon or add a slice of uh, cucumber. Those are natural because they're natural sparkling water. Try and stay away too much from the soda waters because they contain sodium and that contains salt. This is the reason why a can of soda water doesn't really quench your thirst because it's got sodium or salt in it. Our next stroll lands us at the meat section where Dr. Bagat explains that it is important to get fresh meat at the butcher's mart. This way, you are almost certain that the meat is fresh with the highest nutritive value and no chemicals as can be with most canned meats. In terms of meats, poultry and fish, they're all good as long as we try and make sure that the meat we buy is pasture raised, you know, it's eating grass rather than grain. Remember what you you are what you eat ate. So if the, if the animal ate uh, grains and processed uh, uh, carbohydrates, that goes into the meat and actually gets into you. So you are what you eat ate. So try and make sure it's grass-fed beef, you know, it's, it's uh, grass-fed uh, mutton or lamb. Um, with the fish, try and make sure it's not farmed fish, it's uh, cold water fish. In terms of the fishes, the oily fish are better because they contain lots of natural omega-3 fatty acids. So salmon, mackerel, sardines, even in a can. In terms of the meats, 
the best way to get the meat is to get meat that is actually straight from the abattoir and the butcher prepares it for you. If you're eating meat that is processed, that is actually in a package, it's processed, it contains salts, it contains nitrites, and we know that these things are actually bad for you, which is why often bacon, which is actually processed bacon, is actually bad for you because it contains large quantities of nitrates, large quantities of salt, and those things uh, deter from the health benefits of meat. Even though fresh meat, fish, and poultry are packed with nutrients, be mindful of how you prepare these. Over frying with the wrong type of oil will not only kill these beneficial nutrients, but may also introduce toxic elements to your meat. In terms of the fish, the more fish you eat, the better, the healthier for you. It drops your cholesterol, it gives you the good cholesterol, and the best way to prepare it is to either to air fry it or uh, to lightly steam it rather than to fry it. Remember, the more you fry it, the more you burn your meat, the more that crusty meat that we all like contains chemicals that are called aromatic cyclic amines, which can cause cancer of the gut. So try and make sure that you lightly grill or steam your meat or your fish or you boil it rather than to fry it in the nasty oils that we've talked about. As tradition would dictate, most shoppers focus on the grains and starches and only go to the fruits and vegetables section at the end of the grocery run. However, the doctor encourages paying more attention to the fruits and vegetables side to reap more health benefits. This is the most favorite part of the supermarket. Remember that the fruit and veggie section are on the outsides. They don't require advertising. They don't require a, a, a folder saying, I'm healthy, lots of natural ingredients. They are natural, nature-made, healthy, wholesome, organic, and without any chemistry made by man. It is the part that is on the outside of the supermarket. Learn to shop on the outside of the supermarket rather than the inside of the supermarket where all the boxed chemistry is. This doesn't have any labels on it. It doesn't need to say I'm an apple or an orange or a spinach. You know what it is. So when you shop, make sure that your basket is full of the things that we see behind us. The fruits and the veggies, the greens, uh, the cruciform vegetables, the, the, the cauliflower, the cabbage, the asparagus, the broccoli. These are nature-made pharmaceuticals. This is a pharmacy in a supermarket. This is your natural pharmacy. You need to make sure that they are full, they are multicolored like a rainbow. The more colors you have, the more potent the antioxidants, the phytonutrients, chemicals that contain vitamins, minerals uh, that are healthy for you. And if you shop with this in mind, you cannot go wrong. While there's no such thing as a good or a bad vegetable, try to consume ones that have a bitter taste, as they have a higher propensity to help the body fight infections. And as far as fruits go, the smaller, the better. There are no such things as good and bad vegetables, but the vegetables that contain the most nutrients are the vegetables that are green in color, because they are nature's way... The, the, there's an adage, if it tastes nice, don't eat it. The, the more bitter the vegetable, the more that vegetable has protected itself against insects. So the chemistry in that vegetable, for example, uh, bitter broccoli, bitter Brussels sprouts, they contain chemistry that actually also, when you ingest it, helps your body fight infections, fight cancer. So we know that broccoli, for example, has very powerful anti-cancer anti anti properties. We know that broccoli helps against flu. We know that the, in terms of the fruits, the smaller the fruit, the better. The deeper the color, the better. The bigger the fruit, the more the sugar. So avoid the bigger fruits. Go with your strawberries and your blueberries and your blackberries and your pomegranates. Reduce the amount of oranges and apples and watermelons. Reduce the amount of mangoes because they contain a lot of sugar. If you eat a mango, there's a lot of fiber in it, but it still contains a lot of sugar. So a lot of green vegetables, a lot of cruciform vegetables, beans, uh, nuts, seeds and small fruits are the things that I would advise in terms of shopping. Ultimately, it comes down to the psychology used in influencing how and what you buy, as evidenced by the sweets section at the till. The doctor cautions customers to be wary of falling victims to last-minute snack snatches while paying for the bigger stuff as most, if not all of these snacks, are chock full of unhealthy sugars. What tastes good you shouldn't really eat. And this is the last section of our tour around uh, the doctor's kitchen, if you like. And it's important to understand the psychology of, of the supermarket. 
The supermarket is designed by psychologists and by uh, behavioral economists. They look to see how people shop. When you come to the aisle, it's important to understand where you're paying. If you look and scan all the sweets, they're usually not at the level of the adult. They're at the level of the child, where the child can see the sweets or the drinks containers and reach for them as you're leaving. And you've had a long day in the supermarket, you're tired, your child is tagging at you to say, can I have a bar of so-and-so, and you just put it in the shopping basket. That is the aim of the psychology of this. We've talked about the psychology of what meets your eye in the supermarket. When you go into the supermarket, you don't look at the periphery where all the healthy portions are. You look at the boxes right in the middle that contain things that are made in a factory. The same with the sweet section. The sweet section, the ice cream section, and the fizzy drink section is at the level of the child. So it convinces the mother or the father to simply put a can of soda or a bar of chocolate. And this is the psychology of these sweets. In the end, however, there's no lesser evil when it comes to sugar, according to the doctor. So you are better off just staying away. Sadly, all sweets are the same. Whether you take sugar, whether you take fructose in, in, in fruit, or whether you take honey. People assume that because honey is nature made, it is natural for you. You can take raw honey in the smallest amount, it may be good for you. But ultimately, if you, for example, are a pre-diabetic or diabetic, if you have heart disease, if you have blood pressure, all sugars, whether they are honey or the sugar you see on these sweet aisles, are toxic for the system. We are addicted to salt, sugar and fat. But sugar is the most toxic element within the supermarket that we've roamed around today.